Hey, it's Navid here. And in this session, we are going to talk about how to use ChatGPT to supercharge your creator business. And I'm here with David Taylor. He's the co-founder of Prompt Master. And he, they have some really good stuff on their site. I've seen some of their workshops and things like that. So I'm sure we get into some unique use cases for how to leverage ChatGPT and AI the best way in this session to take your creative business to the next level. So with that being said, warm welcome, David. Thank you so much for, uh, for the invitation. And I'm so excited what the next uh, uh, hour or so will bring us because I have a couple of ideas that I want to share, but I actually just want to challenge you to ask me to build this, build a few stuff. I want us to build some okay. exciting stuff that's awesome. uh, in that's... this session. Yeah, that's, that's going to showcase like some of you, your skills. I know you have some unique use cases for ChatGPT as well. There's different yep. things we can get into, but yeah, let, let's, let's go and share the screen as I'll bring this up here so we can like mm -hmm. showcase a little bit how this works. And I, before we, I guess before we start a little bit, tell me a little bit how you got into this, by the way. Tell me how you got into this and okay. then we can start the sharing. Okay. Um, well, I've been in tech for 12 years, 13 years now. And between about 2012 and 2017, I used to run a machine learning startup based out of London. And back then, you know, we now have all these fancy terms, generative AI, large language models. The interesting thing about AI that it's been going in the same direction at a relatively stable pace for the last few decades, but every 10 years, the taxonomy changes. So now what's being called AI, it used to be called uh, data science. Before that, it was big data and machine learning. And now they're just kind of branching off of each other. And it's becoming a very complicated uh, place uh, with a lot of sort of subfields. Now, what back then, what we did what we used as AI was a simple machine learning algorithm that would take uh, website visitor data and try to make predictions on which piece of content, let's say on a news site, which piece of content uh, would blow up and bring more, like marginally bring more visitors over the next hour. We've built this predictive algorithm using machine learning, uh, best practices of the time, mainly built off of TensorFlow. and. Uh, we closed the business down in 2017 because, well, I was 26 years old and I was cocky and I successfully navigated the business into the ground. But, uh, you know, F ever since I was like, one day I will, I will return to AI. And then November 30th, ChatGPT comes out last year and I got the flu during Christmas. So I was bedridden away from my family, couldn't do, couldn't leave the house. So that's what I'm, what am I going to do? I'm gonna, just going to play around with this. So I built a, a discord chatbot for fun. And I was like, yeah, it doesn't have any personality. So let's give it some. And I built a, a copy of Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty. And when I came back into the office uh, uh, to show my friends and my colleagues and my other business, they were like, oh my God, you built Rick. And it was literally like talking like Rick. And it's, it's, not, it's not exciting anymore. A year has passed and everybody understands that. But a year ago, people were just looking for their jaws. And I was like, okay, we need to find a university professor who is into this, right? And we hired a consultant who is a dozen at the Frankfurt Business School of Finance and have years and years of experience in teaching uh, academics for deep learning and machine learning and neural networks. And I just started like asking questions from him. And two months later, I was pretty confidently using ChatGPT already. Some of my friends were learning from me and Dave, my business partner, also joined me and we were just using ChatGPT together. And well, fast forward a year and here we are, over 5 million words of conversations done with ChatGPT in the last year, which is longer than Ernest Hemingway's entire life's work, published, published life's work. Um, and we have successfully been teaching over 8,000 people on how to use ChatGPT like a boss. <laughs> yeah, man, that's a wild journey. I didn't know you were in kind of AI back in the yeah. day. I mean, there, 
that's kind of the interesting thing, right? Like a lot of people, they like, especially like in the, I guess in the creator economy, they see the generative AI movement and now with ChatGPT, the AI revolution, right? But a lot of people, they have been using it for a long time, or at least in like bigger companies and things like that. They have had like AI teams and like developing this. It's not something that just came. So I think that's interesting. Like we are seeing it now, like in a, a lot of use cases that's coming like with, I guess started with like Jasper, Copy AI, then uh, with ChatGPT and things like that. So now, and now of course there's like thousands of tools out there. <laughs> yeah, one to... thing, yeah. one thing that I like to highlight and pinpoint to people who are just, you know, into this, just getting into AI with all the sort of, I don't know, uh, elevated expectations is that when you think of GPT-4, don't forget that it's GPT-4, it's the fourth generation. It's nothing like the only thing that happened in terms of groundbreaking nature is the user experience and leaving the uncanny valley. But the technology itself is not new. Generative pre-trained transformers are not new. Uh, large language models are not new. These have been around for years, only they're just getting better and better. And now it broke through a barrier that makes everybody go yeah, no, it's totally true. It's useful now. We can use it. I'm yeah, sure we can get into that. But let's go and share the screen and let's build some stuff, as you say. So yeah. let's get into this here. I share the screen for you. So, yeah, and you, we are using ChatGPT Plus. I think that's, I would recommend yeah. it to everyone. It has some great features. Most people have seen it. We have uh, demonstrated certain things in uh, in other sessions, but... Yeah, like what, what, when you are using it, what, what do you, what, what's your starting point? What, what do you do? I guess, I mean, you're called prompt master here business, right? So I guess you're, you're like very good with the prompting and different things you do when you get in there. What's the kind of first thing you do when you're gonna, and how do you use it in your business? I guess I would say. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, if anybody is interested in using chat GPT, the first thing I tell them is forget about prompt engineering. And that is quite counterintuitive because we also have a course yeah. that is called prompt engineering. So what the hell am I talking about? Um, because we don't just use prompt engineering. We use something called conversation design. And so let me take you on a, on a, on a short journey to give you a primer, give you guys a primer on how to think about using chat GPT, right? So. Probably many of you have heard about this. Uh, there was this study issued uh, by Har. It was done by Harvard and Wharton and MIT researchers. Uh, that was it, they called the jagged technological frontier, and they were actually using about seven hundred. They were doing an experiment with seven over seven hundred management consultants from the Boston Consulting Group, where. Some of those people were not using large language models, ChatGPT, to do their job, and some of them were using it. They didn't get any formal training before that. They just started using it. And then after that, they got some prompt engineering training, and they also looked at the results. And the, impor the important part here is I'm going to try to find the this, is that if you look at the quality uh, of the work that they were doing without ChatGPT, which is represented in blue, they got scores on a, on a test that was evaluating the quality of their work. And as you can see, they immediately saw an about 40% improvement in the quality of their work once they started using ChatGPT. So now we have a scientific study that confirms that using ChatGPT, if your job is to think, think well, think creatively, think fast, think structured, doesn't matter. If your job is to think, ChatGPT can help you think better, faster, more creatively, et cetera, at least by 40%. And not only that, but every single task was improving. So it's a general use, general purpose tool that can really improve how you work. And not only that, but also there was a time, uh, time aspect 
edit to that. I'm not sure if I can find, yeah, here's, here it is, the timing. So based on this, we can say that if you're good at using ChatGPT, you're gonna do your work 40% better and 30% faster than without ChatGPT. I've heard, I had Amar of Vectara on, he's also like all about AI helps you become faster, you know, faster at whatever you do, essentially. And that's kind of how I see it as well. Like I, I, yeah. I have replaced uh, VAs or workers. I don't need too many people, to be honest, to run, run, you know, the business. I can do a lot of things myself or I have, you know, a VA to do it for me and they do it a lot faster. So, so that's, here is uh, that's what we say. Thing. We say that you can think faster with ChatGPT, yeah. right? As a human, our ability, the whole reason why, our, why humans as a species became intelligent is because we can think. And the faster we can think, the better we become at doing things. And every single invention that we've done over history was either to make, make way for more thinking so we can offload tasks to machines, for example, right? Or to help us think faster, the calculator, the computer, these were all inventions that were designed to help us think faster. Yeah. And this is a concept that I call the cognitive cost. The cognitive cost of writing code right now is smaller because I can think faster. The cognitive cost of writing a copy is now smaller because I can offload most of the tasks to ChatGPT because I can think faster with it. Now, how you do it, though, is an interesting thing because there is one caveat in this study, and that is that I started with saying that the study participants were management consultants from the Boston Consulting Group. And that makes for a biased study because management consultants not only have formal training in how to think, it's literally their job to think the most effective way possible. A management consultant comes into a company, faces a complex convoluted problem, breaks it down using their critical thinking and logic into multiple parts, solves the problem, reframes it, and conveys the problem and the solution to management in five minutes. That's, that's what a management consultant can do really, really, really well uh, in unparalleled ways. People at BCG, McKinsey are the best at doing this in the world. So when it comes to how well you can think, these people are here and everyone else starts here. So unless you get formal training on how to think logically and critically and well, then you won't be able to just immediately seize these results. Unless you get formal training on how to design a conversation like these people can do, you won't be able to do this. And this is actually also what Ethan Mollick, one of the researchers who is an associate professor at assistant professor, sorry, at uh, Wharton University, here's what he said. He said that what he was, um, it's his uh, own blog, oneusefulthing.org. And again, he starts with this. And interestingly, what he explains is that in the study, they found people using ChatGPT in two completely different ways. The ones he called centaurs and cyborgs. It's very vivid. It's, uh, I, like, I like this. So basically, a centaur is it's defined by saying there is a clear dividing line between human and non-human. So when you use ChatGPT as a centaur, you would be writing your own long prompts. It's like it has everything, the persona, the context, the, the structure, the step-by-step -step instructions, the methodology, well-structured prompts. This is what we call prompt engineering, right? This is what we call prompt engineering. And then it returns you an answer, the end result. Send one well-engineered prompt and get one result. That's prompt engineering. That's the centaur practice, as they call it. However, what they found is that without formal prompt engineering training, the natural tendency for people who got formal training on, on how to think well, the way they would work would be working as a cyborg, which means that you're you're basically blending your own work with the AI. You're working together. 
there is no clear dividing line. You're having a conversation. So the management consultants started to design their conversation instead of designing their prompt. They're like, hey, can you do this and this? And then they were like, oh, is that all? Can you make sure to revisit notes? Make sure you added all the important takeaways. Then you get another one. Then it's like, okay, there was a point made in the interview about how man sales have decreased due to lack of kids sale. Add that to the above bullets as well. They started con conversing with it like they would with a human. And of course they would because they're really good at that, right? They're really good at guiding a conversation. So what we found is that this is, and again, this comes also from the professor Molik, is that basically AI is designed to have a conversation, right? For most people, you can just talk to the AI and ask for what you want and then just keep con conversing with it to provide context. And as a chatbot, AI is really built for exactly this sort of use where you speak with AI as if it was another person. It's really funny. It's like a very helpful graduate who really wants to please you. They don't want to disappoint. And that sometimes means that they will even make stuff up to just please you. But the point is that you can strategically provide context step by step if you stop focusing on prompt engineering and start focusing on how do you design the entire conversation. And that is what we teach to our students. We teach conversation design. And part of that mm -hmm. is prompt engineering. I like that because that's, I've heard a lot of uh, people have done in this series, the series, the sessions, they have said the same. And I, that's how I use it. Because if you hire an intern in your business, you're not going to just you know, hey, write a blog post about this. You're gonna have you're gonna have some instructions. You're gonna go maybe back and forth. And I like that you say like conversing yeah. with the AI as a human being. I think it's. I mean, it's also a lot easier for let's say a creator. You don't need to learn how to write these uh, mega prompts or whatever. You need to yeah. just have a back and forth a little bit. So let, let's yeah, get into that. And also, what you will see is that there are only a very few things that we that we're gonna use now, and uh, we say that. None of our students are buying prompt libraries. None of our students are using other people's mega prompts. It's mm -hmm. it's just it's just silly. Once you so once you, you learn, like in the same mind of uh, like me, I, I think a lot of them they are useless to be honest. Like ten thousand yeah. prompts, it's the same like buying like some people are saying, like, hey, buy my tool pack with six thousand plus tools. I mean, you don't. I need bought 6, a lot 000. of them. Yeah, I, I mean, bought I bought a lot some of them. them and I tested them, and they are just. I, I bought them for research because I, I like to know what's out there when I'm doing something. That's usually how I am. <laughs> like when I when I go with funnels and things, I am buying people's products to just test it out. And I think most of them, as you said, they are pretty crappy, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. Let's do something. So um, let's let's do do a task. I'm thinking of of taking the conference website. Sure. To begin with. So what would be what would be the URL? Yes, yeah, go to creatorschool.ai. It should redirect you to the one. I hope it's working now for this yeah, example. It's working. <laughs> we are still doing some changes because it's not at the time we are recording this is not like live. I think you Yeah. So but it should be okay. Okay. So you know what? Let's use ChatGPT to help you make those changes. So what I'm gonna do is it's I'm more like gonna... adding, I need to add more speakers to it <laughs> and all my team need to do it. So we haven't added right. everyone yet and we need to update okay. some pop-ups and stuff. I don't know if they will do all of that, but <laughs> hopefully one so day. Let's I will... see. Yeah. So I don't want to put you on the spot, but what if we ask JGPT to, to evaluate the copy? Yeah, that we can do. Sure. So, okay. So what I'm going to start with is providing a persona and context. So this is the prompt engineering part. And you will see prompt engineering is literally the first step and everything else comes after. Sure. So act as a marketing copywriter. Your task is to make sure that our, our website brings in as many participants for the conference as possible. Here is the challenge. Looks like that I gave it a task, but I'm not giving it a task. This is still part of the context. Yeah. Now I'm going to give it a specific task. Give me a step by step process or a methodology on how 
you would approach um, improving and redoing the landing page so it converts better. Don't write the new copy just yet. Just explain me the steps and why you would do it. This right? will be interesting. So, this will be really interesting because uh, we our landing pages and our, our summits convert really well. So if this can be improved, it's going to be incredible. Let's see. <laughs> this is okay. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's, uh, there you go. Yeah. So now I'm using Keymate AI to check for the link. We'll see if it works. If it doesn't, we can just go back to browse with Bing. Yeah. Um, because yesterday before the day before we do we did the this recording yesterday we had a lot of issues with plugins in general the whole open ai ecosystem was, was yeah down. i was doing something as well with my business partner we didn't yeah we it didn't go too well but let's see right so what you can see here is that it actually takes a look at the link and i gave the url so it checks the page content and it loads the text and yeah. you can see Right. And research IBM confirmed that 77% of businesses already exploring AI. Is this from your website? Yeah. Okay. So we got the website content and now we got like a 15 step process. Okay. So let's see what we have. Data analysis. Okay. User research. Okay. So it's a very, very long explanation. So I'm like, okay, this is, again, I want to think faster. I don't want to read a lot. So I'm like, you only have access to the landing page copy. So give me a process that has less steps and only require that. Remember to stay in character so you already know all the best practices for writing stellar copy okay so now we're just kind of reframing this a bit because it gave me like lots of steps i don't want to do that so it's like okay what else do we have okay now is a streamlined process solely on optimizing the landing page copy i got eight steps okay now it's good so now what i want to do is like okay let's start doing this so i'm literally just copying this do this steps to follow, right? Here's how I want you to do it. Again, I'm just delegating. And this is how I would delegating. What I, I want you to do a headline revision of this landing page copy, but the way I want you to do it is uh, explain the current headline, explain what you think should be done to be, to make it better and give me three to five options for the new head new improved headline that sticks to the brand voice but is better according to you be creative and think outside the box let's see what it comes up with It's going to probably load the URL again. There you go. Yep. Loads. Yeah, it does it several times because it's a longer page, I think. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And originally, I think it loaded the first page and then it reviewed the content. Ha! Look at that. Let's see. Is this correct or do we need uh, to start over? That's actually not the headline. If you go, okay. to, the, if you go to the page, you, it's a <laughs> No, it's, we have a, I don't know. It should be, a, this is an H2 tag. Interesting. Yeah, this is. That, you know what it does? I have also noticed this. Sometimes these tools get wrong, the H, H1, H2, uh -huh. and things like that. This uh -huh. is an H, for sure, this must be an H1 tag. I must be. I, otherwise, I will check with my team, but. 
It for sure should be. You can check also in the code. It, sh it should be an H1 tag. The first Never, time. Nevertheless, let's try the same process and compare what Browse with Bring will give us. You can also ask about, like, what do you think about this headless? You can also bring it in to this, to, to you can copy it as well. But yeah, that's yeah. what I do. But, but either way, the process is useful because you can, people can do this for anything. Like if they have a page or something, I think it's it's great. So let's see. Which one do you tend to lean towards? Is Keymate or Browse with Bing? That depends. If I want to search for a lot of stuff, like uh, if I want to find what is called uh, like sources and resources because I'm doing research, Keymate is better because it uses Google. Of course. And uh, right. And then. This is the other plugin. What's it called? The web, I think web pilot or I think it's. I also uh, used web pilot for a bit. It's just redundant. Teammate can do everything I need. The only challenge here is that again, the plugin reliability was a bit challenged. Okay, so now we got back to the original part. It's pretty similar. So I'm just gonna copy this and let's see what the new chat brings us. Okay. Actually, now it got it. It got it right. Yeah, it got it right. So, so it's <laughs> that's funny actually. That's great. Okay, do you have a comment? Yeah, let me see. I've actually I, to these. I actually used AI a little bit to come up with different ideas. When I it originally came up with a headline, I I had something in mind, and I was using AI to refine it. So I had some of these options before. I had like unlock, <laughs> uh, but I mean I, these can also work. Like, uh, but I transform your. I probably. Would, some some are a little bit cl cliche, like on elevate your craft. I mean, I like to use the creator kind of like I have now, thrive in the new AI. I, I don't know, it's something about it I, I like as I have now, but these are other options. I use AI a lot for to getting ideas for other options. Maybe I like a specific word and that's just something I can change. I don't like take it. I, I don't take everything from what AI comes out with usually. Yeah. I, don't, I don't do it Oops. like that at least. Sorry. And that is the point, right? It's uh, peop what most people usually get wrong is that I either don't use AI at all, or I just want to use AI to do everything for me. You want to get it like per like some people. I think the the wrong mindset is that you want to get it perfect. I think Im imagine now I want to have ad copy. Like now maybe I have a few other options because using the same ad copy all the time maybe it's not advisable. You want to tweak things. You want to split test things. You can even split test the landing page with a different uh, headline, right? So I, I can have also this option now. So, but yeah, I would probably tweak maybe some words could be, could be good for sure. But okay. yeah. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it some feedback. What you said, I like focusing on terms and phrases that focuses on creators. I like the term thrive. So it's still not very good. So let's try to no. give it some, something else. Now, again, don't forget that this now has access to browsing and also has a lot of the stuff in the training data. So let's make use of it. What we want is creating awesome copy. Now, recommend me books and methodologies on how to write awesome copy. So what it's going to do is it's going to actually recommend me a couple of these uh, this books. This is they are doing well. Right? Like the influence, this is one of my favorite books actually I read early days. This is great. And, and now it gives me some classic methodologies. So yeah. I've read all of them pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's do this. I'm going to say, you know, give me a list of key ideas presented in this book that I can use immediately as guides to rewrite my copy from this book. And now what I want is I want to actually rewrite my copy, but first I want to get the context and the guidelines for it. So first I want to make sure that I'm using the right kind of, okay, I said act as a marketing copywriter, but it gives me cliche stuff. So I don't really like it. So now it gave me some, some key ideas from the first book. 
let's do it with the other two as well. I, I think it's, I mean, as, as you're showcasing now, I think this is just useful to learn. If you're not like a master copywriter or you don't know what to do, you can do this strategy because then you're going to know exactly what, what should go into a high converting landing page or a sales page. And they give you this from the, these books now, actually. So it's nice. Yeah. So here, here's the thing. Anytime I teach this specific strategy to people, they're like, okay, I don't need to use Blinkist anymore. So I'm really hoping that no one from Blinkist is going to watch your conference. Because... <laughs> I have a, I have a Blinkist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so now we have three different, uh, three different set of key ideas. So I want to okay synthesize these three sets of key ideas into a step by step. Um, tutorial on how to rewrite a headline to make it awesome. Right? Again, if you think about this, I'm not even design. I'm not even thinking about the prompts I'm writing. I'm thinking about the conversation. I'm designing. I'm the human. I lead the convo. I design the convo. Yeah. But you're right? talking like you're, you're speaking to it like we were like you you have an intern and you're going back and forth. Correct. And like you're talking to your copywriter or whatever. So correct. So that, now I go back. I go back, and I copy the whole thing. Like okay, let's go back to this. Now redo the f following task based on these things you just said to me. As you can see, it's still using a lot of sort of filler words, but yeah. now it's going in a specific direction. It added the urgency part. It, it promised the benefit. It added some specificity. It's it's I, getting there. Yeah. I think like in terms of urgency, you can also add like a countdown. It might not need to be in the yeah in the headline. So that would be as a waste of real estate. I would say to use urgency in I mean you can use it in a headline, but I would probably just use a countdown for an event page. And that's I don't have that now on the page, but we're gonna probably add it like next week. So when I just say, Hey, we have a countdown for urgency, it's like okay, good. Now we got few other stuff and now I can still kind of fine tune it and say uh, let's say you're not permitted to use the following words right I can just ban a few words yeah. right I can say uh, let's say mastery is probably very cliche elite uh, elevate edge transform what else um Exclusive. Let's see what happens. Yeah. See, so basically what we're doing is it's like it's it's getting there. It's slowly getting there. And then the, the, once... probably the AI unveiled could be I mean I, I'm getting new ideas. I probably still like my title, but I would use this for ad copy or something like that to yeah. try different yeah. ideas. I, I think I, I was testing my title a lot. That's why I'm like I'm pretty like I kind of like my title. This is why but, I wanted to do to work with your headline because but, I was but I'm getting sure ideas still even even like. just from our little exercise now I'm getting ideas for what I can do for because I'm working with my ads guy as we are recording this so I'm uh, I'm just thinking what we can do so yeah we need obviously a lot of ideas for that as well. Now here is another trick that, that you can do. We've had a uh, a quite long conversation now. Uh, Dave, my business partner, likes to say I can only have a conversation with ChatGPT that ends up creating a tic tac, which means that I always have long conversations well, with it. Because just the, a question on the new the new updates, because now you can have a yeah. longer context window, you can have more, you know, the token limit, all this, you know, yeah. that's that's hundred and eight, like hundred and twenty eight, twenty eight. Yeah, it's crazy. Hundred twenty eight, hundred and twenty eight thousand right? token context window, yeah. which is gonna be around one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand words. Yeah, that's they say like 300 page book or whatever, depending on something like that. 
Yeah. Which is kind of, that's like kind that. of like Claude. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Least. <laughs> and what, and the interesting thing that you can do now is that basically I can say, okay, now summarize this entire conversation and explain to me step by step what you just did. Here's the thing. This is good for two things. First, it's good for me to double check if I'm still within the context window. Again, with the new updates, it's not going to matter much. Uh, but now I can also have just a single response. And I'm like, okay, so this is what we have. I'm like, okay, you know what? Right? Prompt that I can send to, it doesn't have a theory of mine, so I can say I can send to chat GPT to ask it to write a great headline without having to go through this conversation again, again, and just adheres to all the rules prompt should have. And now I, I actually go back to prompt engineering, right? I'm, I'm like, should have a persona, as much context as possible, a, a list of expected steps, what are considered good responses, um, expected behavior, and any limitations or restraints. This is what we call, so we have we have the persona and the context, the steps, the task. Oops, yeah, the task is not. The task itself. The task, the expected steps, what are considered the good responses, expected behavior, and any limitations or restraints. These are the six key elements of a prompt in prompt engineering. This is what we teach to our students. And obviously, Again, prompt engineering is not not necessary, but it's not enough. Yeah. So now I'm just sending a prompt that will create a prompt for me, right? And now I can just start using this for everything else, right? Now I can be like, okay, now I have this specific description of a prompt. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back because it is just on the top of the context window. And I had the headline revision. Let's do this. Let's move on to step two. Right? So I go in there and say, okay, now I'll rewrite the prompt. But the task is this. Now it's going to actually rewrite the prompt. And when it writes the prompt, I'm going to be so simple and just say execute the prompt. And it just wrote a single single paragraph. Yeah. And some I... of this some of this is not too bad actually. It's like it's usable <laughs> and you can uh, you can tweak certain things. I, I like I like maybe I'm getting it like eighty percent there, but I'm putting my twenty percent myself sometimes or I do. I I don't know how you use it, but like do you find yourself adding your personality and things like that, maybe the last like touch touches to it, or do you get like almost perfect from AI instantly? What, what do you, what do you do for your own stuff? So for my own stuff, uh, we write all of our copy, everything, uh, with AI and you can actually kind of see, uh, how things work. So when I, what, when I open, open our website, only the sort of the main catchphrase is like think faster. These, these were not generated by AI. These were just uh, epiphanies at 4 a.m. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then everything else is actually written by ChatGPT. And for the shorter copies... But did you refine copies, it? Like fine-tune yeah. it? Like with your... Yeah. Because you want it to yeah. sound in a specific way. I assume like you, you have... Your yeah, in some what... cases for, the, for this, for this uh, homepage, we did. And then this landing page was actually written in March. Okay. And the, it's so outdated and it's just, it has a lot of things that has like, it breaks every single copywriting rule. Probably it breaks every single landing page design rule. Probably 
you can tell my hair is a lot longer, even though this is actually an AI avatar of me. It's not me saying these things. Um, okay. So you use like Hey Jen or something like that? Yeah. 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 Uh, and it's just a long ass wall of text. It's just long ass wall of text. And yeah, my, my designer would probably tell you, <laughs> he would like break it up. And it converts so well. Yeah. That we are afraid to touch it. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that, that's the, that's the dangerous part with uh, when you have a page that converts. That's why I'm sure you've seen like pages uh, like from yeah. very traditional copywriters sometimes, and they have those yeah. long pages, and they like they convert and they don't touch them and they don't update the design or anything. Like, here's another one that that, that we sell on our uh, YouTube workshops. This yeah. was written in the first on the first week of September. You will see that it's a lot more refined, but you can still see the interesting stuff. Now, one of the interesting stuff is that, is that the design broke for some reason. Mm -hmm. Never mind. So, uh, so obviously we added, again, it's very sort of unassuming. It's so blatant. We just shove everything into the face of the user. And, mm -hmm. but as you can see, we have shorter chunks, a lot more structured chunks. Yeah. It's a lot, it's a lot better. And uh, when I, what do you, yeah, I just want to share. When I do things like this, like for longer pages, I do it in more chunks. Like I see, otherwise, you will, you will not. I mean, I don't know how you how you get the best output from the AI, but at least for me, it works to do it like that. If I have a section, I will finish that section and then I continue. I, I kind of don't. Yeah. This is a very long page. Yeah, and uh, again, this is also converting really well. We actually hired a marketing consultant to help us revamp this site, and it looked at the numbers and is like, yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah. But again, it's it's still a long website, but still a long long page, but now it actually has a lot more structure to it because we also improve in how we design the conversations with ChatGPT. Right. Everything is written and the way we write it is simple. We just write down, let's say, let me actually just show you. So so one thing that you could do here, actually, I'm just going to go back to your website. It's like, sure. check the website link again and explain to me the uh, major chunks that chunks and components that make up the website logically. Yeah, when I write copy, I always do it in sections because it makes it yeah. easier for my designer or whatever it's to the to, to the site and also it's like how copy or landing pages or sales pages they are broken down you have the you know the first component then you have testimonials and all these kind of you have an faq section you have a part where what's included in the product it's pretty straightforward to do it to be honest for someone who's not yeah. familiar so yeah it's actually pretty straightforward but now i get sort of the the big overview and yeah this is something so everything, when you converse with an AI and you design your own conversation design, what we, or design your own conversations, what I like to follow is the pyramid principle from Barbara Minto. Again, we go, we go in circles. Uh, the pyramid principle is one of the mandatory books to read when you join with the Boston Consulting Group as a management consultant. Like that's, that's how you write presentations when you're working as a BCG consultant. And that is also applying here. So the, the pyramid principle is pretty simple, but I'm not gonna explain it. So explain the pyramid principle from Barbara Minto to me, following the book's methodology. I'm actually going to use the pyramid principle to explain what the pyramid principle is. This is what the pyramid principle says. Start with the answer. So begin a clear thesis statement or a conclusion. This is how you write effectively, uh, not for copy, but for conveying complex ideas to, to laymen. Group and summarize your arguments. Support your thesis with grouped arguments that are themselves structures as mini pyramids, summarizing the idea followed by supporting data or rational, and then logically order your supporting ideas. Okay, now let's see. Uh, give me a simple demonstration. 
demonstration of this in practice with an everyday example. Now what you can see I'm doing is I'm actually learning about a concept using ChatGPT. I'm using ChatGPT as my own tutor. So now what, what you have is you get a thesis, set, like we should have a barbecue this weekend, supporting argument. The weather forecast predicts sunny size. We have not hosted a social event in several months. Sub arguments. Sunny weather is ideal for outdoor cooking. We can use a new patio furniture. Sub arguments for this is that it will allow us to catch up with friends. We can share and enjoy a variety of dishes. So now it has the ordered pyramid structure. And now I can say, turn the ordered pyramid structure into a pitch. I can say my wife. <laughs> no, this is awesome. Like, I, I like that for sure. I mean, great. Uh, really good. Uh, I just wanted to ask you for, you know, you, I'm sure you talk about this as well and to your students, but the hallucination part, like you, with this method, like you, you don't get it as often, right? Like if you're doing this kind of mega prompts and things like that, maybe you can get it more. I, I'm not sure what you've seen in terms of hallucination. I spoke to Amar of Victara about this as well. And these platforms, they don't get it as much because you have a lot more, you, you upload your knowledge and whatever, but how, how do you deal with that yourself? Okay. Before you... So a couple of things. Um, there are two main sources. This is also something that we usually cover on the Wednesday YouTube webinars. There are two main reasons for hallucination. It's e you either have a bad prompt, right? Or it just start, it just loses it and just stops, starts making things like, uh, sorry, let me rephrase. The reason why you get a bad response is because you either have a bad prompt or the model gets shoved, shoved into hallucination mode. As Ethan Mollick said, uh, it's like a, a very eager student who wants to please you, even if that means at the cost of making things up. Uh, I like to say it's like university students at an exam who didn't study, so wants to you know pass and make things up. Um, but the problem with mega prompts is that there has been some research that said that long when it comes to long prompts, the model's attention to the prompt and adherence to the prompt's instructions is not evenly distributed throughout the prompt's length. The beginning and the end, it has a lot more weight. And then the longer the prompt is, the bigger chunk in the middle just gets lost. And that's why mega prompts are usually bad, because whatever is in the, in the middle, it just gets lost. You just basically end up confusing the model. What we do is I end up just giving a burst of quick and short tasks to the model. I'm micromanaging the model, right? And there is this, the there is this thesis about employee maturity. Hmm. I don't, uh, employee maturity model. I don't remember. I studied this at university and the employee maturity, uh, model was a very, very important part of how you use ChatGPT. Because when you have a new employee, you start with episodic listening, and then you end up with continuous conversation at scale, right? It's, that's how you move forwards. You, when you have a new employee, you first, you're capable of Give it, give a task and then get it back. Give a task and get a response. And it's, it's very simple, right? So if I want to get anything done with a new employee, I will actually need to, I will actually need to give several just short tasks. And then when they have a high level of maturity, they will be able to follow just the guidelines and protocols and whatnot. They're autonomous. We are coming back to this with the human element to this, even though, you know, you, when you're speaking to the AI, like as we showed in the examples, Founded. treat it as a human, go back and forth. I think that's, yeah. that's more effective for sure. Okay. Now I found it. So it's called situational leadership. And when situational leadership, when you start with a new employee, it's going to have, uh, it's, it's not going to have the capability and it's going to be insecure. 
So individuals lack the specific skills required for the job in hand, and they are willing to work at the task. They're novice, but enthusiastic. And then when unable but confident, individuals are more able to do the task. However, they are demotivated for this job or task, unwilling to do the task. Now, here's the thing. ChatGPT is here, right? They lack the skills often to do a long, complicated task that requires autonomy, but it is enthusiastic. And if you design the right conversation, you can guide it to this when it's capable and confident. And this is why the conversation design is very important because just like you would manage an employee, um, a, a very green employee, you would need to guide them through these tasks. Yeah. And also another way to, so there we usually explain three main ways to get rid of hallucination. One is you need to feed more context into the prompts, conversation design again. Or two, you can get the prompts from external sources. One would be using search. So you just use KeyMate plugin for Google search or web browsing and you search for specific information and that gets pulled into the context window or you use a vector database for a personal knowledge base and then you can just feed the data into it and uh, that you know, third been... part is interesting i because i use like for example I, I mean i have courses and you know things like that so i can upload the uh that to different platforms, but it's interesting to do it within ChatGPT for certain use case. I probably wouldn't upload my course into that. Like I, I, I use external third-party tools like Searchy or something like that and I upload my knowledge. Let's say I have a course and I want people to chat with, chat with me. I have a chat on my website and things like that. That's what I use this for, to kind of pull from my knowledge. Uh, but I'm interested to see how that works with, I think in Keymate, you can do certain, some things like that, maybe in ChatGPT natively as well. So interested to see how you use this. Okay, so I'm in. And now there are a couple of op options. So obviously KeyMate allows you to create your own personal knowledge base. It uses Pinecone. Mm -hmm. Pinecone is a vector database. It's probably the largest vector database for vector search. And what happens is that when you, it's basically using what called, what's called the taxicab geometry. The same logic at a smaller scale. And if a couple of techies are watching this, you will, they will be probably pulling their <laughs> hairs out. But it's a good anal analogy. It's not scientifically sound what I'm, gonna, what I'm about to say, but it's a good way to I imagine this. Um, the way Netflix recommendation engine works, Amazon recommendation engine works, is that it has a movie that has some information about who watches it. And then it looks for the movie that's very close to that in that recommending space, right? Taxi cab is the same thing. Hey, I want to go here. And then the, the, the cab driver will figure out the shortest way possible. And then they will also take the next client that is the closest to the drop-off point of the current client. So cab drivers think very similarly to how vector databases work. And it gives a long-term memory for AI because what happens is that it breaks down texts into strings of text and the strings are tokenized and the tokens are vectorized. Now that's a very loaded sentence. What happens is that it, it puts into, not into a three-dimensional space, but actually it's a high-dimensional space. It's, I don't know, 1,500 is it, different is the question dimensions. Of this, is that like when you're using like Keymate to do certain things, is that a controlled space? So it's like that, the AI is not learning. Let's say you have a course content you want to upload. Maybe that wouldn't be advice. I mean, if you do it to ChatGPT and uploading your we IP do that. or whatever. We do you that. Do. We do that. And it's it's controlled or that, does it learn about the model? So it can be basically be accessible to other people as well. If, what, because in, in other tools it, I've used, it's basically controlled. Let's say if I'm using Searchy, it's controlled because they are using the OpenAI API and a lot of things. But you're also you're uploading your knowledge. So you're just pulling from that. And it's not, and it's not going into the public, it's, you know. It's not going into public, no. Okay, it's, that's it's the same with Keymate. Okay. Same with Keymate that uses Pinecone. There is yeah. also two other options to use. One that's is cool. a Y Combinator startup that's called Superpowered AI that we like to use very much. This is, I think, it's, uh, yeah. They they have a they have a free tier that allows you to 
And we get started. They, I, I've been using their research preview for quite a long time. It's good for building stuff. This is for but building stuff, right? It's not more for, for developer stuff. access because it was, uh, yeah. it was quite a bit of a higher price point than some other ones. So it's, I guess it's for, yeah. for tools. But what's really important yeah, but I mean, the developer access gets you okay. access to everything. You just start paying for what uh, Just the premium support that was a 1000 a month. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But here's the thing. You can build your own GPTs that have yeah. integrated knowledge base. You don't even need to think about that. And mm -hmm. this is also something that people can learn with ProMaster how to build those. So the yeah. Assistant Playground already gives us access to that. So as you can see, I'm like, I have a test assistant and the ProMaster tutor. The ProMaster tutor knows about two things. One, it has the captions of one of our two-hour workshops, and it also has a prompt engineering course transcript. So now I can just ask, like, explain the six key elements of a prompt, which is part of the part of the prompt engineering course. And I'm really hoping it's going to work because yesterday the whole thing was down. So we'll see. Yeah. I have a, this is, yeah, this, this you have access, we have already access to this, but we don't have access in the main chat GPT is coming. I mean, that's coming there as well. To, yeah. to What's cluster. important is that we've been demoing the exact same feature set with Keymate for like two months. Yeah. So Keymate knows the exact same thing from within chat GPT. You can secure your own data your own knowledge base in Pinecone, in a secure database, and then you can use Keymate to pull in data whenever it needed for more context yes. from the knowledge base that stops hallucination. So Keymate provides this, and now what look at that. What do you think that. will happen to Key Keymate? Is a very, very good plugin. There's a lot of you know yeah. crappy plugins as well, but what do you think is going to happen to plugins like that with this uh, so new release? Because we are very, very close to the Keymate guys, I know that they already turned their plugin into a GPT. Mm -hmm. So we have Keymate GPT that is capable of doing everything that they've been doing so far. And it just gives more functionality and it's actually really good. Yeah, because you can sell GPTs as well. So yeah. that's, that's, in, that's really interesting. I think a lot of useful plugins, that's maybe what they will do, actually. They will yeah, it did just morph into, morph into GPTs. Yeah, and exactly. Our students are also very excited about building GPTs because we've been teaching them how to build bots mm. using make.com. And, and most of the use cases are now actually covered by GPTs. Of, so... I like to say yesterday we had this webinar on YouTube and I like to say we kind of have been teaching people how to build GPTs before GPTs came around. So uh, going back to this, it gave me the six key elements of the prompt that it even gave me the source. It took the data from this and the context or persona, the task, examples, expected behavior constraints, what is considered good, expected steps towards the goal. It gave me the right answers. Now, let me find the captions the captions we, uh, so in that two hour workshops, we were explaining things like the advanced data analysis. So explain the key ideas on how to use advanced data analysis. Let's see, let's see what it returns. It should be returning some of any information from some of the captions. And now why, why that is important is that the the prompt engineering course PDF, it's a structured document. This one is an unstructured document and it gave me the ideas. Let's see. So the advanced data feature operates as a Python interpreter with a sandbox firewall execution environment. Those are my exact words in the course. Okay. I don't know where the, where it gets from the author. I think the captions were the author system. That's weird. Anyway, so yeah. yeah, but in the workshop, I did mention that there are over 300 of Python libraries installed, the advanced data analysis, limitations, and it also gives me the source. Why this is important is that I can just keep talking in a voice memo and I can take the voice memo, transcribe that, upload it to my knowledge base, and I will still be able to get references back to it when I use ChatGPT. So the yeah. fact that you can find sources and, and citations in itself is not 
not a big thing. The fact that you can use unstructured data and unstructured text to get there is a big thing because humans think that way, right? We yeah. think in a very unstructured way. We communicate in a very unstructured way. Hell, I most of the time, I don't even make sense, <laughs> right? But ChatGPT yeah. can make sense out of it. Yeah. No, this is really, really useful, I think, because you can, have, as you said, you can have like a podcast or any video and have the transcript upload that and then you can chat with it as you saw here and it's also in a control what i like that you said is can be in a control environment right so you can you can probably have different things maybe you can have something for your team as well i spoke to Stu mclaren about this like they even use it for launches and stuff like that but that's control so let's say their team wants information from from Stu, which is the CEO of the company but they cannot get to him or he's busy they will just you know upload his knowledge to this uh, kind of knowledge base and they can chat with him. So that can be one aspect. They can also be like, uh, it's useful for students to get information from you. Maybe you are sleeping, but they can get information and you don't have as much customer support and things like that. So, so many use cases for this, I think. So one thing that we are testing and it's not official yet. So the, uh, by the time this goes out, it will be official, but I'm not allowed to say names yet, but we are working with a university where we're going to create tutors for subjects. It's exactly for that reason. Imagine that at most universities, professors are overwhelmed. There are hundreds of students for one professor and the best way of learning is personal learning. When I have the ability to ask personalized questions from someone that is knowledgeable. And the problem with that is that it's that if let's say every single one of the students wants to speak to the professor for an hour every day, that means a hundred hours are required from a professor is just completely not attainable. But if the professor puts all the knowledge about the subject, all the previous recordings of his own lectures, her own lectures into a knowledge base, the students can ask questions about the subject like they have their own tutor and that it is 24 seven available. You can even have a voice conversation, right? Because now you can use ChatGPT for voice conversations. And um, it's like, let me say, uh, hey, say hi to all the people who are coming to the AI Summit. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the AI Summit. Right. So you actually have that real time conversation impact. So I, I have ADHD, which means that my, um, my mind wanders a lot and there are very weird things that I start wondering about. It's my internal word is crazy weird. I love it and I love to get, sort of get lost in it. So what I like to do is when I'm sitting in the car, driving to the office in the morning, instead of listening to the radio or listening to music, I'm actually just, I, I just plug my phone into the car, whip up chat GPT, and I'm like, okay, so I was thinking, how would a project look like that is capable of doing X, Y, Z? And then we start having a conversation because now it's almost entirely real time. But I can even have a conversation about a specific subject if I'm a university student, right? And that's incredibly powerful because now you actually have access to, to a personal tutor that is knowledgeable in the subject that you want to learn on 24 seven. No, I love it. As we wrap this up, I just wanted to ask, do you use, we talked a lot about ChatGPT, of course, but do you use any other tools in your workflow? Uh, I mean, we talked about Keymate, of course, which is for ChatGPT, but anything else you're using that yeah. people could find useful for this session? Yeah, so one thing I suggest going is uh, there is this website called There is an AI for that, which has almost 10,000 tools on their website. There is also another one called topai.tools. I, li uh, I like also Matt Wolf's future tools a little bit. I mean, he's, yeah. he has a, he, yeah, I like yeah. his stuff a lot. He's also a speaker on the summit. Yeah, so these aggregators give you a really good idea on all the tools. Obviously, it's hard to find the right tools. It's the just too many why, tools, you know what I mean? Like especially if you're, uh, I mean, what, what I would say, my, my advice a lot of times is that 
you're probably already using some kind of tool which has AI features, right? We were, we were talking before we started recording, like even Riverside, which is a like platform to record uh, remote podcasts, videos, and things like that. They have AI features now. And, and they, Zoom and... Yeah, yeah, all these like tools and uh, tools that started like as a course platform, they're adding AI and even marketing yeah. platforms, even Canva is a really big and uh, Adobe as well. So they are adding all of this and they are becoming more, even more user-friendly for people who might not be photographers or design. I'm using Photoshop more now with the generative fill and all this stuff with Firefly We use too. generative AI, generative fill a lot. Dave is using Photoshop for generative AI a lot. Um, was, he a for, well, was he like a creative in terms of photography before or he's like just enjoying it now because they have added like AI features? That's also I think that his skill set definitely got upgraded because mm. of generative AI in Photoshop. Then also we're using HeyGen for avatar creation a lot. We're using um, Eleven Labs for voice, voiceovers a lot. All of our course materials have been actually created, most 90% of them have been created uh, with an AI avatar. Interesting. So we, did, we didn't what's actually see What's the experience on this? I just want to ask you, what's the experience from the students in terms of like the connection? Is that the same or what, do, what are they saying? I'm sure maybe they are it not. Varies. The, it varies. Yeah, it must varies, and, right? And we are using avatars that we did like six months ago. The, the avatars that we have today are just, a hundred times better, but we haven't redone the course mm -hmm. materials yet. Interesting. Uh, but we have students who are like, I didn't even know. I felt something was off a bit because, you know, <laughs> of the uncanny valley, but I didn't even know. And then we also had someone who came to us and they're like, hey, I just bought your course. And I realized that it's actually uh, an AI avatar and not a real person. So I need a refund. So it, it varies. People have different, different people have different aptitude towards AI avatars, but uh, that's, the, that's how we met with the KeyMate guys, right? Um, what we did is, <laughs> what we did is we have an Instagram account with about 5,000 uh, followers. We don't pay too much attention to it, but at some point during this spring, we were creating a lot of content for it and we were using Dave's AI avatar. And one day I wake up, go in the office and I get a message from one of our team members and they're like, I just found a video on Facebook as a sponsored Facebook ad from a company that's not us. And it was Dave's avatar talking about the app. And I'm like, what? It's like, yeah, they, we, we, they took one of our posts from Instagram and they used it as an ad creative. For, and I'm like, okay, I need to look at it. And I looked at it and I'm like, who's Keymate? I know Keymate. I know the, is that that, is it that Keymate? It's like, yeah, it's that Keymate. Okay. So it was like, I don't know, July, June. So I go on the Keymate website, whip up the support chat and I start typing. It's 8 a.m. here in Hungary when I do that. And I'm like, hey guys, I saw this ad. It's a really cool creative. I love the fact that it's very similar to a guy I work with. In fact, it's so similar that I'm convinced it's the exact same post that we have on our Instagram account. And I just said, look, guys, if you want us to, we can actually create you more content like that. Just let us know. And then because it was 8 a.m. and the CEO lives in L.A., he was like going to bed. But before going to bed, he looked at all the support messages. So we started having a chat because he was online. And he's like, oh, yeah, we actually love that creative. It's one of our best converting ads. I'm like, awesome. Do you want to work together? Yeah, we do. And that's how we started working together because of Dave's AI avatar. Yeah. No, that's a great story. Love it. And we're going to wrap this one up. So I have, I think, two final questions. So what's your number one piece of advice for a creator, a solopreneur, or dig digital business owner who is getting into the world of AI and want to implement this in their creator business to grow it and things like that. There is a simple plug as an answer there. Come join the ProMaster community where we can teach all of that to you, especially because we have a lot of business owners. And I, what I love about them is that they help each other solve these problems. And that's one thing. And the second thing is 
don't think about which AI tool you should use. Don't think about what AI can do for you. Think about where you can save time in your workflow. That's the crux of it. You want to save time. What are the tasks that take you the most time to go through text, generate text, understand text, modify text, generate data, modify data, understand data. Just generating information can be now done by AI. So think about how you work, how your business works. What are the workflows that contain a lot of generation of information, whether it be text or data or audio or video? Those will be the, par the parts of your business that you can actually automate with artificial intelligence. So start from a perspective, what is it? Start from the so what, not from the what, right? What? Yes, it's AI. It can do a lot of things. So what? So you can save a lot of time. And we have a process, we call it an AI audit, where we help business owners actually identify those tasks. But yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. Thanks so much, and uh, David, for coming on for the session. I think it was really valuable. We have shared a lot of stuff throughout this, uh, this series here. And uh, leave your biggest takeaways in the comments as well, if you have any thoughts on what we shared here. Of course, I'll leave some uh, links in the description so you can go and check out Prompt Master as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now. Bye.